Hello, welcome to the course PH5BO6 Electrodynamics 2. The contents of this course is taken from Introduction to Electrodynamics by David J. Griffiths. We will continue to discuss topics from Chapter 9 Electromagnetic Waves. So far, we have been discussing about electromagnetic waves in free space or vacuum. It's time now to discuss about electromagnetic waves in matter. Hope you remember the Maxwell's equation in matter, divergence of d equal to rho f, divergence of b equal to 0, curl of e equal to minus dou b by dou t, curl of h equal to j f plus dou d by dou t, where rho f is the free charge density and j f is the free current density. Now, if you talk about materials where free charges and free currents are absent, for example, a dielectric material, which is of particular interest in the case of optics. So, in this case, uh, rho f and j f becomes zero. So, you have a divergence of d equal to zero, divergence of b equal to zero, curl of e equal to minus dou b by dou t and curl of h equal to dou d by dou t. Let's consider linear media where the displacement field d equal to epsilon e and the auxiliary field h equal to 1 over mu into b. Let's also consider that the media is homogeneous, meaning the value of permeability and permittivity are uniform across the material. So in the first equation, substitute for d as epsilon e epsilon is a constant so you can take it outside the the derivative and when you take it to the right hand side it gets cancelled so the first equation becomes divergence of e equal to zero second and third equations remain the same and in the fourth equation substitute for h as one over mu into b similarly d can be substituted by epsilon e rearrange the terms you get curl of b equal to mu epsilon dou e by dou t so once you get this equation now you know the drill we have done this for the case of free space take the curl of third and fourth equations and expand those so curl of third equation gives you del square e equal to mu epsilon dou square e by dou t square similarly when you do that for the fourth equation you get del square b equal to mu epsilon dou square b by dou t square we have done exactly the same procedure for free space you got a similar equation just that instead of mu epsilon you have you had mu naught epsilon naught this looks uh, very similar to the three dimensional wave equation. So in place of one over V square, you have mu epsilon, which means you can write the velocity of electromagnetic wave in matter V equal to one over square root of epsilon mu. Or in terms of the velocity in free space C, you can write V equal to C by N, where N which is square root of mu epsilon divided by mu naught epsilon naught is a constant known as refractive index or index of refraction. So if you take free space, mu is mu naught epsilon equal to epsilon naught. So both the denominator and numerator cancel, you get n equal to 1. So refractive index of vacuum or free space equal to 1. What about other materials? So if you choose any material, the value of permeability is very close to permeability at free space. So you can cancel mu and mu naught. So you are left with n equal to square root of epsilon by epsilon naught, which is relative permeability epsilon r. Epsilon r is also known as the dielectric constant. So refractive index of a material is nothing but square root of dielectric constant. Typically for any material, dielectric constant is greater than 1, which means n is always greater than 1. So you are dividing C with a value which is greater than 1, which means V is always less than C. Or light travels 
slower through matter compared to free space. Okay. So this is the first change happened when light travels from from uh, from vacuum when light enters into material. Its velocity decreases. What happens to the wavelength? So it's quite clear from this diagram. Suppose lambda is the wavelength in free space. What is wavelength? It's a distance between two similar points. And look here, inside the material, the distance decreases or the wavelength decreases. By what factor it decreases? The same factor as, uh, as what? The velocity decreases. So velocity decreases by a factor of n. In the same factor, the wavelength also decreases. So you can write lambda n or wavelength inside matter equal to lambda divided by n where lambda is the wavelength in free space. But what about frequency? This is quite interesting. So let's first calculate free frequency in free space. So frequency nu equal to c by lambda. Now what will be the frequency inside material? The velocity v divided by wavelength lambda n. Velocity v you can write in terms of c as c by n. Similarly lambda n is lambda divided by n. So 1 by n, 1 by n cancel. You get the same factor c by lambda. In other words, frequency in free space and frequency inside the material both are same. So even though the velocity and wavelength change, frequency doesn't change. What's the reason? The change in velocity and the change in, in the wavelength both cancel each other. So as a result, frequency remains a constant. So always uh, remember this point. Now physically what's happening? So as the wave is passing through the material, the wave consists of the electric and magnetic field. So electric field polarize the molecules in the material. Similarly, the magnetic field magnetize the molecule. So as a result of this polarization magnetization, you have uh, dipoles created inside the material. Since the incident fields are oscillating, we are talking about sinusoidal waves here. So since the fields are oscillating, the dipoles are also oscillating. As you know, an oscillating dipole creates its own electric and magnetic field. So now we have two types of field. One is the incident field and one is the induced field. What happened? The induced fields combine with the original fields in a such a way as to create a single wave with same frequency but different speed. This is also known as evolved or seen extension theorem in optics. So whatever changes we see in velocity or wavelength, this is an outcome of intermixing of different fields, the incident field as well as the induced field. So once you derive the wave equation in matter and also derive the expression for velocity, you can do the same procedure for all the energy parameters. So this is quite straightforward. I hope you remember the energy parameter for the free space case. Simply replace epsilon naught with epsilon, mu naught with mu and c with v. You get the corresponding parameters in matter. So the energy density u equal to half epsilon e square plus 1 over mu b square. Similarly, the pointing vector which talks about the energy flow per unit time, per unit area given by 1 over mu e cross b. Similarly, intensity which is the average value of pointing vector. This is half epsilon v e naught square. And amplitudes of electric and magnetic fields are related through the relate to the, through the equation b naught equal to one over v e naught. Right in the free space, you had b naught equal to one over c e naught. So this is quite straightforward. The question is, what happens when a wave passes from one medium into another? For example, from air to water or from glass to plastic. What happens? So just like the case of uh, a transverse wave traveling from one string to another string, the electromagnetic wave also is going to undergo reflection and 
transmission. A part of the wave is going to get reflected and the remaining part is going to get transmitted. Now, how much percentage is reflected and how much is transmitted? This is determined by the electrodynamic boundary condition. We have derived this in the previous chapter. If you have two mediums with permeability is mu1 and mu2 and permittivity is epsilon1 and epsilon2. So if the electromagnetic field travels from medium 1 to medium 2, we have seen that the parallel component of the electric field is continuous across the interface. Similarly, the perpendicular component is also continuous across the interface. So the complete uh, electrodynamic boundary condition you can write as epsilon 1 E1 perpendicular minus equal to epsilon 2 E2 perpendicular. Similarly, B1 perpendicular equal to B2 perpendicular, E1 parallel equal to E2 parallel, 1 over mu1 B1 parallel equal to 1 over mu2 B2 parallel. So these are the equations which are going to determine the processes happening at a material interface. In the next class, we are going to uh, do a complete analysis of reflection and transmission of happening at a material interface in the light of this boundary condition. So stay tuned. Goodbye.